Welcome to your Retirement Solution Podcast. Imagine the value in knowing exactly what day you could retire and have the income you wanted for the rest of your life. Listen on to explore the strategies that are designed to set you on track to living your happily ever after in retirement. Now on to the show with your host, Matt Halloran. Hello and welcome to episode number 14 with Jim Black. Today we're going to talk about what to do when the markets get crazy. Now, Jim, the markets have been a little bit crazy at the beginning of 2018, but this isn't the first time that's happened. So can you tell us what's going on when the markets get volatile and are moving around? Well, it is interesting. The market has been like this for as long as I can remember. I remember when I started, they said the Dow would never hit 2000. (laughs) Well, those days are long since gone. I have people all the time who are in here saying, Jim, why don't you predict the market for me? Tell me what's going to happen today. Tell me what's going to happen this year in the market. I keep a magic eight ball on every de- every office in, in that we have when I meet with clients. And if, they, if you want a projection, I'm, I'll go to my magic eight ball. But the reality is when it comes to the market, there's so many different factors going on. Mm-hmm. It's really what do you need the market to do for you? Well, we know it's been up and we know it's been down. And I'm positive that that trend will continue forever. Mm-hmm. You know, I love <laughs> – there was a great quote that I saw a number of years ago uh, by Warren Buffett. And he was talking about the market, and he said – let me see if I can get this right. He said, it's only when the tide goes out that you can tell who's been swimming naked. Yes, yeah. I love that quote, yeah. <laughs> and his point is that everyone's brilliant when the market's going up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's only when the market goes down that you truly separate you know, the good from the bad. And when it comes to the market, if your retirement is dependent upon what the market does today or tomorrow – Well, you have a big problem because you don't have a plan. You're in what I call buy and hope. With that, let's talk about what's going through your clients' minds with this because so many people have subscribed to that buy and hope. How do we break that cycle? (laughs) So that's an interesting question. What do my clients think right now? I have no idea because, frankly, I haven't received a single call from any of my clients. They all have a plan. Hmm. They know that uh, they know that someday they're going to take long-term money from the market, but that's not today. That's not the next five years or even 10 years or potentially even 20 years. So fluctuations that happen in the market today are totally irrelevant to what the market's going to be five years or 10 years or even 20 years from today. So I'm guessing that they're laying on a beach somewhere or <laughs> playing tennis or doing whatever they're supposed to be doing in retirement, and they're not worrying about this. Okay. I'm going to flip this on you then, because uh, uh, what do you think is going through the general public's mind? So people who don't have a plan, people who don't work with you, who don't fully understand that independence from the market, what do you think they're thinking? (laughs) Based on what I'm watching on the news or seeing on on the internet, I'm going to say they're heading to the seller with the canned foods. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody out there is in, they're in crisis mode. They're going, oh my gosh, you know, the world is going to change. Things are happening, you know, whether it's political things or things that are happening around the world with different dictators or the market or interest rates. There's always something to be afraid of out there if if you don't have a plan and you don't you don't really know what you're going to do. So I'm guessing based on what's happening out there that people are nervous. People are panicking because they see some changes. Things looked pretty settled for a while and then they got a little bit uh, a little bit hazy and uh, things started bouncing around. That's the the nature of the market. If we all knew when the market was going to go up and down, uh, there'd be no need to have a market. Mm-hmm. We can just go by and we know that we would be fine. The reality is If you don't have a plan, it's not the fault of the market. The market is going to fluctuate. You need to take control of what you're doing so that you actually don't have to worry about whether the ups and downs in the market come today or next year or tomorrow. You are able to help people, and you just said that. I'm not receiving calls. Uh, You know, I'm hoping that my clients are sitting on a beach enjoying themselves. With your planning process, and we've talked about your planning process on other podcasts, but I think it's a good idea to take this time where there is a lot of doom and gloom out there and, and people are kind of freaking out a little bit. When they work with you and they go through your planning process, let's walk through that and how over that process people gain a level of clarity about what they own, what they're doing, and what that plan does for them. 
All right. So if I'm coming in to work on a plan with somebody, if you're coming in here to see us, there's a couple of places that we're going to look at first. The first thing is, are you retired or not retired? So you're going to go down a little bit different path depending upon where you are in your life. I mean, the fun one that I love is somebody who says, I'm not retired, but I want to be because then you really take a look at, okay, what's possible. But in either case, we start looking at a plan and say, okay, how much are you spending? And we start looking at your expenses. Now, a lot of people think, oh, my gosh, we're talking about a budget. And they think if we're talking about a budget, I I just told them to go on a diet. And that's not the case. I'm not telling people to stop spending or even cut their spending back. What I'm saying is let's figure out what number you need. What's the nut that you need into your account every month so that you can do everything that you've always been doing and maybe some travel, maybe some of those other things. My favorite question in the whole world is if money wasn't an issue for you, What would you be doing today? How would you be living your life differently than you're currently living? And then that's the goal for how we put all the rest of the pieces together. But the other thing that's very common in putting a plan together is people have been told their whole lives, well, you got to put money in the market. You got to have money in the market. And that may be true, especially if you're 25 or 30 years old. But once you're 55 or 70 and you're at that point where you're taking income out of your accounts, perhaps you don't need as much risk. Perhaps it's time to start looking at what are the other alternatives out there. And the tough part is most people are getting advice from a broker who gets paid based on the money that's at risk in the market. If somebody's getting paid to manage your money at risk, what's the likelihood they're going to tell you you don't need risk anymore? Mm -hmm. So that's the hard part too is make sure you're getting advice from somebody who's actually got your best interest at heart. But it's really taking a look at what do you want to do with the rest of your life? How do you want to do it? And what do we need to do to make sure that you have the confidence and the courage to pull the trigger and actually go and enjoy the rest of your life and not worry about what's happening every day, not only with the market, but what's happening with the money, with interest rates, with everything else. Mm -hmm. What do you do? How do you help people reduce the impact the media has on their feelings surrounding their personal finances. Oh, that is a big one. And that's becoming such a big one now. The, you know, the thing that's on the, on the news now, I mean, you can turn on CNBC 24 hours a day, and there's lots of other channels out there that are doing it. The first thing I would say to people who are out there is you need to realize that those shows are infotainment. Is that the word they're using now instead mm-hmm. of news? Infotainment, where... It's the equivalent in my mind to Maury Povich talking about money instead of, or in the market instead of, you know, who the father is. The reality is those shows make money on fear. And they're all about trying to make you as afraid as possible so that you have to listen to the show tomorrow to try and get resolved, uh, whatever the issue was for today. And the reality is they have absolutely no control over the market. Certainly they can predict and project and do whatever they want for their projections, but it's just that. It's a projection. And the reality is you can't live on a projection. That's what the market's doing. That's why the market is so volatile day over day is it's all about projections and expectations. When you retire and get the last paycheck you're ever going to get for the rest of your life, You can't live like that. Nobody wants to be worried every day about where the next paycheck is going to come from. If you're going to be retired for, my gosh, 20, 30, even 40 years, you got to know where that money's coming from. And the market's great. Don't get me wrong. I love the market. And for money that you don't need for the next, you know, 10 to 20 years, the market is a great place. But I'll tell you what, I've seen a ton of people come into my office who failed who ran out of money before they died. And the number one reason that I have seen in my practice is it's because they were taking income from a fluctuating account. And a fluctuating account, by the way, is just any account where you don't have a principal guarantee. The market is a fluctuating account. People think, hey, I want to have my money in the market because that's where the greatest return is. And normally that is absolutely true. But it's also where the biggest drops are. If you're taking income from those accounts, look at 2008. The market dropped 50%. You're down 50% and you've still got the electric bill. It's the same cost it was the month before, but you have 50% less money to pay it. Don't make that mistake. If you're retired, never, never, never take income from a fluctuating account. Put that money in some place where it's going to be there when you need it. Certainly have money in the market. As I said, I love the market. I think it's going to be great. I can see the market going up over the next decade, over the next six months, over the next year. Yeah, it's anybody's guess. Mm Mm-hmm. 
Now, you wrote a magnificent book, and I know that our listeners can get a copy of that book by going on your website. And one of the great things about the book specifically was when I read it, I felt like there were lots of little words of wisdom, little ideas, anecdotes, things that made me feel a lot more comfortable about my personal financial future by looking at things a little bit differently. So the markets have been going crazy. They're going to go crazy. Uh, that's just the way the markets go. So what words of wisdom do you have? Is there a, a story or a, a, something along those lines that you can just have our listeners maybe feel a little bit more at ease? Mm, okay, that's interesting. So two things here. If I was to think of a story that for people to kind of think about and kind of decide what they want to do is it's really beginning with the end in mind. If you've heard that, uh, that was a Stephen Covey. And he talks about the concept of if you don't know where you're going, it doesn't matter what road you take to get there. And I would say it's the same with the market or with your retirement or anything else that you want to do in your life. If you begin with the end in mind, if you know what you're trying to accomplish, then it becomes very easy to make the right decisions to get there. I think of clients who have come in who wanted, who thought they wanted to retire, didn't want to think they wanted to retire, but didn't know, didn't know it was available. Imagine, think about this for a second. You know exactly how much money you have or close enough that you can round it up. You know what the value of your house is, how much you have in your qualified accounts and your checking accounts and your investment accounts. You add all that up, but think about it. You come up with a number. Let's say it's a million dollars. But do you know how much money you can take every month of every year for the rest of your life, grow that money with inflation, pay the taxes, and not run out of money before you die? That is the number one thing that people ask us for when they come in and visit with us is to try and figure out what that number is. How do I know how much I can spend so I don't leave $2 million on the table, but also so I don't run out of money? So that's the big thing that I would look at. And, and maybe that's my final words in, in leaving it too is you got to have a plan. You got to have a plan. You got to know what you're trying to accomplish. If it's you know moving to a different country, if it's traveling for the next decade – Certainly, I'm going to bet it's not sitting on the porch and rocking because you don't know if you can spend any money at all. So first of all, you need a plan. Once you have a plan that shows you how much money you can spend, it also will show you how much risk you need to take. If you don't need to have money in the market for the next decade, then don't. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you've got money that you don't need for that period of time, sure, go ahead and put it in the market and let it run. But as I said, my big advice and the difference between success and failure is – you got to have a plan. Get somebody who knows how to create a plan. Somebody who's taken hundreds and hundreds of clients into the retirement process and had them come out the other end successfully, who actually had a plan where they were able to get the income that they needed. I think 2008 is a great example. Mm -hmm. Anybody who went through our planning process prior to 2008, the plan worked exactly as it was supposed to. Where a decade later, nobody had to change their plan. Nobody had to stop traveling. They had, nobody had to give up their retirement. Everything worked exactly the way it was supposed to. So get a plan and follow it. Awesome. Get a plan and follow it. Jim Black, thank you very much for your time today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. All right. In episode 15, we'll be coming down the pipeline very, very soon. So make sure you hit that subscribe now button below. For Jim Black, this is Matt Haller. And thank you very much for listening. And we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. 